Welcome to the Doylestown Township Environmental Advisory Council meeting on July 12th, 2021. Mr. Cardinal says, let's get rolling. Uh, we are missing a couple of members at the moment. So uh, I don't, Anne's not on the Zoom yet. Tanya's not here, Marty's not here. Um, don't have a form. We don't have a form. No, we don't have form. So I'm not sure how to proceed. Aaron, give me some advice. I, I, I know Anne is planning to be here via Zoom. So you basically, you know, you would need to, you know, keep any substantive discussions for a future meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll get into why it's going to change more radically. So. Act 65 was just recently passed. Um, it's Bill 5501, if you wanted to look it up on the current schedule. But it amended the Sunshine Law. And the Sunshine Law is a requirement for municipalities to hold meetings in a public location with public notice so that the public can attend and put it, give input on any you know, issues that may arise or they might have issue with or are concerned with. Um, they made an amendment to the bill and what this amendment does it does uh, a couple of things it requires that agendas be posted I'm sorry, and emails back that she doesn't have the new link um, uh, does the one that margaret sent um, Seven sent a new one. So the one that Margaret sent. No, I have one from 7-9. Oh, no, I don't have, I only have one from 7-9. When was it sent? It was this afternoon. Yeah, okay. So I just sent it to you, Jim. Oh, okay. Uh, very good, very good. I don't have any hands on here. I didn't receive that new Zoom. to do. I'll go get it to her just one moment. Me, um, as soon as I get it, we'll send it out. This might take a couple of minutes. All right, well, it's gonna, it might take a minute. I'm, I'm waiting to receive it. But do you want to continue on it? Um, let's hope that Ann gets a, a new Zoom and we can proceed. Right. So it's going to be however long it takes for the server to send it to me and then to her. So, um, so anyways, Act 65 made three substantive changes. All agendas for any you know committee board, board of supervisors now needs to be posted on the internet and on the exterior of the meeting room, which is basically the front door of the building, 24 hours in advance. Um, it's not a problem with the EAC, you guys are good with getting us the agenda, but it has to be posted. Once it's posted, no changes can be made to what's talked about in the meeting. You cannot veer off of that agenda, with one exception. If the issue that arises within the meeting is de minimis, legal word for not involving money or a contract you can vote as a group to have that added to the agenda and then you can discuss it and you know come to a ruling on it as a group if it's agreed to by the group if that happens within the meeting a revised agenda that needs to be posted no more than 24 hours after the meeting that includes that addition okay is that, does that only pertain to things that are voted on or any discussion topics? Anything that affects township business. Okay, so for, just for an example, I was going to give an, an update on what the county is doing, which involves the township because it's in our neck of the woods, but it's not necessarily something. No, that would not be in action. Okay. Just so sure. a great example of this was um, last year the Board of Supervisors in June. Uh, Jen brought forward uh, the Juneteenth resolution um, that was not included on the agenda, but it was you know ratified that night. That kind of action um, is what they're trying to prevent with this uh, amendment to the law. 
Um, so, you know, say you do have something you want to vote off. It has, you know, a financial or contractual concern. You are still allowed to bring it, but it has to be de minimis in nature. If it's not, it's got to be basically tabled until the next meeting when it can be added to the agenda with proper notice. Okay, let me just make sure I understand. We're going to send this all out Are in you? writing as well. Okay, please. So, you know, I'm bringing it up just because sometimes it's a little bit um, difficult to understand sometimes because it's a, it's a very minute, specific change. And um, so we are actually going to send this in written format as well to everyone. You know, it's a volunteer on a board and committee and, and the board of supervisors is actually going to get pulled in for a briefing on this by Jeff, our uh, solicitor. Oh, that so this went into effect, and so we're so this goes. This was um, ratified on June 29th. It goes into effect 60 days after. So basically, in essence, it's from you know the beginning of September forward, this rule becomes in effect, uh, which is why we're starting to bring it up at the the boards that we are, you know, liaisons to, in case there are you know particular questions. This group, you don't have a whole lot to worry about. Um, you know, we had the same discussion yesterday with the Pension Advisor Committee, who's getting ready to do an RFP. So there was quite a bit of, you know, questioning about, you know, additions to that, subcommittees and things of that nature. Um, so, so that's why we're bringing it up. A uh, question I have for this committee, uh, if we have a resident, like we did, uh, come in to voice a concern like about pesticides and that kind of thing, we're allowed to discuss the resident's concerns, we're not allowed to take any action on it until Correct. Okay. And, and there are a number of things we do in each meeting that basically are just discussion and yeah, that, updates. Yeah, that would, that's be, all that would be de minimis in but, nature, so that doesn't really, you know. Just even under Robert's rules, we don't have a quorum. We can't, for example, approve minutes. Right. Yeah. Right? I mean, Correct. Just, right. Just there can be no voting. You can't do voting. Right. 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 If we and don't so have a quorum, so. We most of the things that the, the law is going to inhibit, we couldn't do under Robert's rules anyway. So that's not really so new. And can you hear us? Not really so impactful. We can't hear you, Andy. Yeah. Her, her that audio still connecting. Uh, looks like your audio is still trying to connect. <laughs> she had eye surgery today. Oh, fun. Yeah, probably shouldn't drive it. Try it now. Hello. Yeah, Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome and good to see you. Can you see us? Uh, with one eye. <laughs> okay, Welcome. We are learning about a, a, an updated, uh, a, a new, a new law, basically about um, camp, boards and councils and the Sunshine Law. It's a, an amendment to the Sunshine. Okay. Law. So we'll we'll get you up to speed on that soon because we're going to receive written information about it. Okay. But, it does affect what we can and cannot uh, act on, basically, in, in our meetings. We don't have that many actions to tell yeah, you. We know that's, yeah, that's, we don't many. that's why I say it's predominantly not going to be a big issue for this group. Yeah, I mean, we do occasionally, and I mean, but it, it's, it's about things we vote on, correct? Correct. Usually it has to do with spending money. Correct. Okay. And if it's so, not on the agenda, it cannot be discussed until the next week. It meeting. can if it's de minimis. If and the group minutes. agrees. Yeah. Okay. So you basically, you know, if someone wants to bring it forward, the group has to vote to allow it to come forward, and then you can take action if it's de minimis, you know, not involving money or a contract. Okay. I hope that, um, yeah, we all have to pay attention to this because I'm not going to be writing these agendas, these <laughs> agendas forever, you know, yeah. and they do get a little tricky sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, because there's so much. We talk about so many different things every you're, month. You're one of the more um, inclusive on your agendas as well, so they're, you know, that's never been an issue for mm -hmm. what's included on it. Some of our other, you know, board committees, like the one for the Board of Supervisors is going to become probably about twice as long now. Wow. Yeah. wow. Because <laughs> for our agenda, sometimes it'll be, you know, manager's report, you know, director of operations report. We now have to list out everything they're going to discuss in action item. So, you know, when Dave Tomko gets up and say, we're going forward with this project, you already know about it, you've already budgeted for it, but we're spending money now. And he goes through the checklist. They've got to include that in the notice now. Okay. Well, thanks for that update, Aaron. Is that, uh, I, I look forward to reading it. 
Yeah. Uh, we have guests tonight who I'd like to welcome, uh, especially because you just heard some of what goes on in, in local government. This is Casey and Justin, did I hear Fry? Yes. Okay, welcome to both of you. And uh, what you just heard is an example of the difficulty sometimes in, in, um, in, in volunteering. And Aaron is a staff member for the township, but the rest of us, well, Dan is, Dan is a supervisor. Dan Wood is one of our township supervisors. He's our liaison for this, this council. But um, you know, the rest of us who are volunteers, as soon as you jump onto a volunteer council like this, you have an awful lot to learn because most of us have no background at all in local government or government at all, perhaps. I know I was not in this field even remotely. So neither was Jim, right? Kurt, you weren't either. Right. Yeah, so here we are. And Anne, you were not involved. No, in not at all. We come into a, a task, a, a council or a board like this as a volunteer, knowing very little about how things run. It's a good thing to hang around for a while. Uh, a one or two year stint isn't enough. So we are on three year, um, three year, what do you want to say? What Cycles. Else? Term. Term. Your terms, yeah. And some of us renew, you know, and some of us don't. Uh, Sometimes somebody leaves early, but I'm glad you heard some of that because it'll give you a, a, an even greater sense of how things go yeah. right, or don't go. That yeah, was perfect. Good. <laughs> Good. If I could ask you guys, you're as part of Boy Scouts or some or another group like that? Yeah, Boy Scouts. Sisters in the community? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Eagle Scouts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Good. So, um, minutes approval for the June 8th meeting. First of all, I have to ask, so we have four out of seven members. Is that a quorum? That's a yes, it's a quorum. Okay. Okay. And you see how important you were. Yes, sorry. Uh, we had problems getting the link for some reason, but we're, okay. we're good now. Uh, did everybody have a chance to look at the minutes? Any questions or comments? The, the minutes look good, but I was not at the June 8th meeting, so I don't want to be the one to uh, say they're good. So if you're going to abstain, technically you don't have a quorum to approve the minutes and you have to push it to the next meeting. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? Say that again. Uh, because if Ann's going to abstain from it, then we'll just oh. push the approval to the next meeting because we won't have enough votes to approve it. Okay, so we have to, we have to. Okay. Well, I just didn't want to nominate. I didn't want to be, make the motion. Okay. Can, can, without having been here, can Ann vote to approve? She read them. And believe I did read them. I agree with them. It looks like you can vote. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you read them. So uh, all in favor of. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Favorable. Okay. Second. I second. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. The meeting June. minutes are approved for the June eighth meeting. Not used to this much minutia at the beginning of the eighth. I know. <laughs> it's a really slow start. I'm sorry. Okay. How about the budget? Any? I didn't see a budget. Did you see a budget for this month? No changes. Yeah, we've only spent sixteen percent of our budget year to date. And so, so we don't have anything to talk about. Okay. No changes. So that's all right. All right. Thank you. We can pass on that. Uh, new business. This is one of the reasons that. Uh, Justin and Casey are here apparently, or, or one of the things you're interested in, the single use plastics ban. We were banned from having any banning for the last year. Pennsylvania's legislature um, said we couldn't discuss, well, I don't know if we couldn't discuss it, but we, we couldn't do anything. I think about we couldn't it. pass any ordinance which restricted the use of single use plastic, as yeah. I understand. That's for the correct. last year. Yep. So, so now we can revive the discussion at the very least. And um, we have discussed this last year prior to the statewide ban. So uh, we, we were prepared, I think, when that happened to uh, compose a letter to our Board of Supervisors advising uh, the support of the township re resolution banning single-use plastics. Heidi Shiver, one of our members who is not here tonight, has volunteered to write the letter and I would support her doing that and we can take a look at it at the August meeting. Does anybody want to say more about that? Yeah, I, I'd like to make two points. Mm -hmm. um, one is that I think the language here is really important. And I think when you say banning single-use plastic, meaning everything, that means everything. That means Coke bottles, straws, spoons, and that's not going to happen. And I, think, and I think if we're not a little more careful about the language, I think it may, it may put people off. Um, so I think, and I just came from Vermont, and when you go to the supermarket in Vermont, they say, 
So how many bags would you like to purchase? Right? You could cost you a dime for any bag to be paper or plastic. Um, so I think uh, I think we should we should what we should be asking for is a um, a policy on the use of single use plastic, not a ban. Because that word I think is is overly aggressive and and off-putting. so it's it's a policy and an ordinance. Um, and you know straws may be banned, uh, bags may be taxed, Coke bottles no probably nobody's going to touch those because that's iconic. So I'm, I mean I'm just. That's kind of how I see. It. So I, I think we need a policy on, on different kinds of plastic. Okay. The other thing I say is, um, as we I think most of us know, is that the the borough did pass. Or was it a resolution or an ordinance? They had one way to go, but it wasn't passed. Uh, I think it was something was passed. I believe. I, but it might. They, have they may have had the resolution. Resolution. Yes. Yes. Uh, I just I spoke with Wendy Margolis last weekend, who is. Uh, actually, I don't think she's the head of the. The is on their EAC, but she's very active with their EAC, and she's the one driving force behind it. It's not something that has passed in the law yet, right? But they are ready to try to go right. as soon as they can. Right. So I guess my I guess the other point I would like to make is that you know to make this as easy as possible in the community and businesses, I think we should coordinate as closely as possible with the borough I agree. so that you don't have just mass confusion. Um, so those are the two points I'd like to make is, is in terms of when we compose this letter, maybe those should be sort of kept in mind. Let's yeah. make sure that we let Heidi know about these. I think that you I think that what you just, what you just outlined, Jim, makes perfect sense to me. And I, and I believe the borough's resolution is based off of, um, I can't think of the town, one of the other towns that got their ban in right before <laughs> the ban was banned. <laughs> Well, and, and didn't, uh, I Philadelphia, can't didn't Philadelphia just adopt or put into effect? I think they want to. I don't know if they have yet. Because right. I, I thought they were kind of spring loaded, ready to go as soon as the legislative. They, they might be. Uh, a little bit of background that I know, I believe, I think it was Senator Santacero told me this. Um, they were a little surprised that the, the ban was not in the budget this year um, from the opposition. So there's a little bit of concern, like what might be coming down the road about that. But as of yet, there's something definitive. But there, there's a little bit of worry. It's not over yet from the state side. You mean the ban so, on the ban? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just from talking with people mm -hmm. who are, you know, state level. But uh, for now, looks like nothing's stopping us, unless they try to retroactively roll back laws or something like that. Of course, well, I would also think that the more townships and boroughs that adopt this in the meantime, the harder it's going to be for the state to override it. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. And, if, and if we stop using the word ban and we use the word policy or ordinance, which I think is really important. Thank you, Jim, for that. And, uh, and, and if we, we do align ourselves with the borough, that makes sense to me. And, I, I, and isn't there a haven't we, I know we heard from Lambertville, New Jersey, but uh, Lambertville, New Jersey did pass an ordinance and they do have a single use plastics policy right. over there. Yeah. And I think some of what we've been looking at is, is uh, kind of following in their footsteps. I don't know if the borough did that. Well, right. New Jersey, it's a little bit different setup than PA though. Yeah. And New yeah. Jersey has a democratic legislature. We have a, a, a statewide and we have a Republican so they're in, in a little bit different situation. But as a, as a process, is the one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. As a process, though, I mean, the way they rolled it out was uh, they, you know, they, first there was there was some community engagement where they talked to people about what they thought would work and what wouldn't work. And there was yes. an edu educational process. Then there was an ordinance, and the ordinance rolled out over. I think people had I don't know 12 months to sort of figure what. Mm -hmm. And then you know, so it didn't just come into being overnight. It, there was Ab a problem to roll it out. Sorry, Absolutely. It was at least a year. It may have been more than that. And they gave out um, reusable uh, bags that people could take to the grocery store. They gave them options. Uh, they went door to door to quote unquote sell it. Um, yeah, they talked to all the business leaders before they did it. I don't know that we've done that. Um, and we also have to be mindful that um, we in the township have a hospital which is going to be an exempted uh, use um, that the borough and Lambertville and Narberth didn't deal with. 
I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I'm just saying we need to be cautious and aware of what we're doing. So, so let's let's talk about this letter then. This letter just may be a letter of intent. Um, and be, because what, what when I think about what Lambertville, New Jersey did, it was so well planned, so carefully rolled out that I would like to do something like that here and maybe in coordination with with Doylestown Borough. Yeah. But I think that this letter uh, perhaps should just be that, a letter of intent mm -hmm. to, and, and, and nothing more at this point. I, what do you guys think about that? From, from a supervisor perspective, I think that's a good way to go. And also as part of the letter, invite feedback from the supervisors. Because I know there are two supervisors who would support this, but I'm not talking about the other three, how they lean on it. Um, so finding out what their concerns are about it as we chart a course forward, I think would make it more likely to pass instead of it solely coming from the school. So we need to tread lightly, tread slowly. So uh, we can ask Heidi to draft a letter, but with these considerations in mind, yeah. does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I, just I, think... up, I just looked up what Philadelphia did. Philadelphia passed a single use plastic bag ban, right? oh. bag ban. <laughs> in December of 2019, and now that the ban on bans has been lifted, it'll be implemented beginning July 1st, 2021, but it takes effect over a period of time. And there's a whole bunch of stuff on their website that helps people understand what it is and how to do it. Yeah, I, sus I suspect we will have an easier time with a plastic bag ban. Some guys, especially because most of our businesses here in the township are bigger stores that already have to take this into consideration in other locations across the country that they're in. So I think that is going to be easier. I think for whatever reason, people get riled up when you start talking about straws. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Straws oh, but, well, but, this, but it's easy. they're easy to substitute straws. I know people well, I, right. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, I'm just saying from a, a selling it to people's standpoint. Okay. The, the plastic, plastic bag thing is the low hanging fruit. Yeah. Sorry, say that plastic again. bags are the low hanging fruit. So they're so, they're the easiest to do, and there are billions of them produced every year, and they're just they're all in landfills or in the ocean. So yeah, that that's where you can go make a big impact in a very short period of time. And you can also just like point to the side of any of our highways and like look, look, there's a plastic sure. bag that we could we can make this a thing of the, hopefully a thing of the past right. in our area. And and there has just to wildlife. I mean, there's all kinds of problems plastic yeah. bags and there's, there's no reason why we have to have them anymore. In the minutes then, Jim, do we have these details that we've just discussed or can we make sure they're in there? Um, yes. So, so I'm that, going to... Yeah, so Heidi has an outline yes, including gonna... the single, the, the plastic bags as the low hanging fruit right, and right. the effect mm -hmm. on the environment and the wildlife. I'm sure she would include some of this anyway. But let's give her some very specific direction. Yeah. Um, could I just add to, you know, um, DelVal University, of course, is also in our township. And they've been very proactive about getting on board with recycling and with um, working with not having single use plastics. Uh, we might be able to piggyback on a model that they've already set up. We may not have to reinvent the wheel here at all. Yeah. Um, of course, Tanya's not here tonight, but she might have some insight on that or could at least give us the right person to talk to. But, but also, I think we have to coordinate with the borough, too, because this is oh, thing. Yeah. yeah, businesses um, in particular. I think. So, yeah. yeah, well, I, the last time I asked uh, Stephanie, I think, for a list of businesses in the township, she said there was no list of businesses in the township. So that's that like that'd be as number one find out who we need to talk to. Okay, so I think we have plenty to give Heidi yeah. uh, to work with, and we'll take a look at it again in August then. That makes sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We've got months of work here before it goes, anything I, happens. I, guess yeah. I would play lean on the borough. Wendy Margolis over there, especially because she's put a lot of work into this okay. already. Okay, all right. So it's and, I, and I know our, um, our survey we sent out was based off the borough survey. Yeah, 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 yeah. we did it identically. Which on actually, purpose. I think with the letter to the supervisor should probably include the results with that. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you, Dan. Just to remind, like, hey, we asked the people, and this is what they said. 
Right. Okay, good. All right, we have a lot to go on. Um, that was a, that turned out to be a big, a big item. So yeah. thanks, everybody. I think we'll move on. So new business B is a revival of our heritage tree program. We've hit, we've kicked this around a little bit, but Marty's not here. Don is dead. I don't know what to do. I, I, I think, and you have that fabulous maple tree. Silver maple. Yeah. Well, you know, Marty and Jeff Schumacher had agreed to, to, to continue the uh, heritage tree. Okay. So who, we need. Who, who is it? Marty and who? Jeff, Jeff Schumacher. Schumacher. Yeah, Jeff would be a good person to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if we gave him specific directions, he would, I think he would do it. If, right. if we told him what to do, right? There was, there was a form to fill out the dimensions of the tree, the species. He Aaron, might do it. I hope you have some of that in your office. It is still all on our website. It's on our website. Wonderful. Okay. So we have that's a great, great tree and bench program. Okay. So the heritage tree program, we, if we ask they're, they're on the park and rec portion of our website. Oh, it's on park and rec. Okay. Oh, it shouldn't be there. Should be on ADC. Yeah, that it's not a park and rec uh, program. Heritage tree program is really a shade tree commission, which is us as well. So uh, let's try to move that if we can. I will discuss it with Karen. Okay. Because oh. the trees go in her parks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, this is no, you've misunderstood what the heritage tree program is. Those are not trees in the park. These are trees on private properties. This oh, is just okay. finding significant trees. Oh, no, I know what you mean. It's not. Sure. Any oh. these oaks. I do not have any. I know exactly what you're talking about. I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't able to. Find and that's not on the website then? No. Oh, okay. So that's something different. I think there may be a remnant somewhere that's not public, but. Where is that? Well, it was good that Andrea Sustin's files, wherever those might have been. Yeah. Yeah. I have we, should, we should have it documented somewhere, I would think. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, it'll definitely be in the, uh, in the records. Okay, so what to, to do? do? What to do? Because there's also, for example, a, a shagbark hickory tree on the Neiman Trail mm -hmm. that's fabulous. It, we should be recognizing these champion trees and publicizing their existence, celebrating them. We are the Shade Tree Commission, um, but uh, if, I mean, Marty's not here tonight. He didn't tell me he, was com he wasn't coming, you know, and yeah. he's, 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 he's challenged right now. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's struggling a bit. Yeah. I, let me, I, I know Jeff very well. Let me, let me ask Jeff if he's okay. willing to. I think to Jeff would be happy to. I think he would. I think that. he would. Yeah. So Kelly knows okay. all of it. let me ask Jeff if he's willing to. We give him a, a, a specific right. address and an assignment and a tree to look at. He'll, I think he would do it. We just have to find the materials. Yeah. I'll, I'll see if I have anything, Aaron. I may have something at home. Okay, so so Jim, you're going to talk to Jeff Schumacher. Mm -hmm. Aaron and I are going to look for paperwork or yeah. something. The remnants Andrea of the had files on that, yeah. Yeah, we actually created forms. I know, I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, she had put together as much of the history as she could find. There, Some of it's lost, but there was, she while she was in office, she kept the history of all the ones that uh, that were documented. Yeah. So it's somewhere. Any ideas, Dan? Oh, oh, I, I, you know, we could email Andrea too. I yeah, yes, yeah, we her. can email Andrea, see if she has, you know. Okay. Numbers. But Aaron, if, if, if you poke around, maybe you'll find something? Yeah, let me do that first. Yeah, let us know so that we can get this back on track. Okay, third on new business. Heidi expressed a concern and we put it on the agenda about the use of uh, pesticides along the township roads, which includes 75 miles of roadway. Janine, and there's yes, a picture. Go ahead and take one of those oh, and pass thank it along. You. Okay, great. Uh, we actually have, we were anticipating this on other discussions we've had. So this is the road over by Delta. It has the two green islands that you can see there. Those are normally treated. They're going untreated right now. Um, so EAC can use that as a demonstration area for, you know, proof of concept for an alternative to the pesticides. If you wanted to meadow it, you could. I'm sorry, what are we looking at here? What's growing on right now? It's grass right now. 
This is coming into this is the West Town Borough. I think Brown. we're talking about the green strips in between the roads. Yes, correct. The, oh, main the, the, the main road strips. there has those long rectangular strips. This is on West State Road down by uh, East Butler. Okay. So, so these areas are now, they're township. We own them, this okay. part of our roadways. This okay. is exactly the issues um, and we're these, talking about. All right, these are medial strips. And, and these are treated the same way that we do our shoulders. Okay. But we have stopped treating these to allow you, you know, to do whatever you want with them in terms of, you know, proving a concept in terms of going away from pesticides. Because we would like to go away from pesticides as well. Yeah. But we need to make sure it works. So, so you're talking about two median strips in the middle of the road. Correct. Okay. And when you say pesticides, you mean insecticides or herbicides? Or it includes herbicides? all of those. The, the term pesticide. Why would we, great. and why would we, what is it that we're trying to, we're just trying to suppress weeds, is that what it is? So usually the shoulders are kept for about three or four feet. We do treat with an herbicide, right. to, to use the term you're familiar with, a herbicide to keep those clear and from encroaching onto the road. Wait, so basically everywhere that the township mows, you know, keeps that verge, they also spray. So we don't mow that whole thing, we spray. No, just in general. Everywhere. Pretty much any road that you drive on, the shoulder is most likely treated. Through three or four feet on both sides? Yeah. Wow. Did somebody send me a copy of that, by the way? No. Because Didn't we just hold up the camera? Certainly not. No, <laughs> <laughs> they do for us because Escalade too. So, okay, so. Um, it's a broad leaf, you know, herbicide. Mm -hmm. So Aaron, in response to- That keeps you know, trees from growing and other shrubs from growing that will encroach on the road and affect safety of the road. Um, while maintaining a, you know, an area for people to pull off. So, and so it's just a broad spectrum of herbicides just intend to kill everything. It's like a roundup or something. Basically, like in essence, yes. Say okay. on my road, they don't do that. I, I'm sure they do not. Where? Turk Road. Because it's a sunken road and once a year they come by with this big thing and just shave off the you know, it's, there's a bank right. on either side, yeah. but there's plants living there. They've never shown the slightest sign other than being cut off all the time. They've never been poisoned. And it's a township road. It's Turk Road. It's, it's Turk, Turk Road, township road. Yeah. Well, so, and but my, my road, I've noticed just recently that a, 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 a brown patch of dead vegetation, it's about a foot wide, the whole length of the road. So it clearly looks like something was done there. Yes. So it's just just where the where the where the grass meets the you know the, the asphalt. Right, and you're saying about twelve inches. Yeah, it's about that wide. Just yeah. Okay, yeah. maybe eighteen. Yeah. And you're saying nothing. They, there's never been any sign that any of those plants have been it's, any way damaged by poison. We probably don't do it to every inch of road, but we do do it to a fair amount of them. Okay. Because um, yeah. my metal that are too. You know. Yeah. There's no sign that they're doing that. Yeah. But that is a general practice that is done on most roads. So, Aaron, is the is this invitation to experiment with the untreated strips? It, it's kind of a response to our concern. Well, yeah, because we want to foster a solution to the problem. Right. Okay. Because you know, if there is a solution, you know, that's not a chemical that you know, you've talked to Chris many times, mm -hmm. and Paul has a very similar you know mindset that we would like to move away from that. You know, it is it is a risk. But they're still mulling it, right? Uh, they do some of that as well. I mean, they do mull it. So if their concern is bushes yeah. and trees growing and interposing on the road, they're mulling it. They don't mow all of it, though, and they don't mow it that frequently. These, these so if you went to just a mowing solution, you then have to do that weekly, which means you now have to hire a considerable amount of manpower Wait, for these two to strips mow 75 70. miles worth of road. No, I mean these two strips. Oh, these two strips, they're not doing anything to them. They're not mowing them either. No. So, so we have an in invitation to experiment. Correct. So, you're the gorilla gardener. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, and you know, some of us would be happy to join you. Um, maybe, maybe we could come up with some kind of interesting wildflower, some kind of meadow flower that yeah. grows low. It has to grow right. low. Remember, they would sell them all once a year. You know. Yeah, the, the goal is to, to right. main, yeah. for these, the main thing here is it can be nothing substantial that, you know, would be, you know, an impairment in an accident, say, yeah. you know, drunk driver drives over the median. Grass is no problem. 
you know, it's all grass, no problem. Yeah. yeah. So like so. putting a tree there would be definitely a bad thing. So anything along that nature. The other thing is you must be able to maintain the sight lines. Yeah. So there's no obstruction at all in either so, physical or visual. Correct. But you yeah. could still do a meadow like um, you know, planting there or, or treatment or, or something of that nature. You know, one of the joys of of traveling in Texas is seeing what blooms along the roadways yeah. in April and May. It's just awesome. And I think at some point Pennsylvania was trying something with wildflowers along roadways, but it it's a program that if it was probably short lived. I, I, I don't see any evidence of it anymore. Wouldn't it be fabulous? If we could, if we could experiment in such a way that we could model beauty in the roadway, health in the roadway, instead of uh, destruction in the roadway. So, what, what, what say you? What, what should we do? We have an invitation here. I'd like to take the invitation and work on those two strips. It's another project. We're, yeah. we're stretched thin, especially here we are tonight, yeah. where we have two missing members. I, I feel so, frankly, I don't feel like I know enough about the issue to say anything intelligent. To be perfectly honest, mm -hmm. there's so many, there's so many counterbalancing mm -hmm. factors to consider. Um, I, I wouldn't know how to proceed. I think that uh, we're going to have to, we have to do some research. And I'm also thinking that, you know, we're discussing township-owned lots, open space, naturalizing the basins. This is another natural, uh, potentially naturalized yeah, you could space. Do that. For sure. And so that it could come under the umbrella of naturalizing uh, lots and open spaces. Mm -hmm. That discussion is taking place, and we will proceed with that in September. We have a meeting with the, plan, the Planning Commission on September 14th. It's about Ready for 100, which is about all things environmental, including, uh, I think, um, healthy vegetation. What do you think? Um, can I ask Eric? Can I ask you, yeah. as as one of our I'll regular okay. attenders, to do some research yeah. about what already exists, yeah. what we could possibly do, because this is I can I think it's an interesting possibility. And what do you think? I think I'm really nervous to take on yet another project with our. I'm I'm sorry to say this, but our age group, um, and labor intensive things. I would love to see something like partnering with um, either scouts or DelVal University or maybe high school classes to take over some of the heavy lifting on that rather and maybe we be more of a supervisory rather than we also take on literally gardening in median strips. I don't think we I'm do. a little nervous on that, I'll be honest. I don't, I don't think we as a group can garden no, on, on I, median I, strips. I think um, maybe the best solution would be if we looked at making recommendations mm -hmm. uh, to Paul Gar and his team. Yes. And like, you know, we don't necessarily have the time to go out there and do this ourselves, but we have a relatively low effort solution. Like we want to plant these kinds of seeds there mm -hmm. and see how it goes. And they, they can do that for us as part of the usual maintenance. And we see how it goes and mm -hmm. continue to make recommendations based off of yeah, that. that. I'd be good with that. Yeah, I just, I'm really yeah. reluctant to, you know, we're well, kind of spread. Yeah, and ultimately, like we're talking about 75 miles toward the road, it's going to be their responsibility. You know, and I, I think we're talking about these well. two strips. Right, but, but these but, two but, strips could be a once and done. Right, but what I'm saying is if, if we prove, the, if we do the proof exactly. of concept here, yeah. then we can have them do it elsewhere. Right. Throughout. Uh, Paul is a reasonable man, mm -hmm. and we, he's already come to the EAC before um, for for recommendations on uh, an ash road buffer plant a couple of years ago. He's he's willing he's willing to get uh, get our opinions and then run with it. So I think Dan, thank you for that. That's uh, we we can't do the work, and thank you for reminding us we are not capable of doing the actual work but the well, I, I, okay i'm not saying that it's just we've already committed to a lot of things yeah and you know we've got three members missing tonight and this is just a meeting it's not a work project yeah. so um, it makes me nervous to commit to another big yeah. project and meadows oh people always think oh meadows will be easy you just throw down the seed and away you go but meadows are a ton of work in the beginning because you need to get out all the invasive stuff 
meadows are really labor intensive in the beginning, then they get easier. Yeah, and that's my th thing is like, when I'm looking at this from, if we want to do this township wide at some point, then we need to prove that it's not, it's either going to cost about the same amount or maybe, or close to what we're already spending on pesticide use and that kind of thing uh, to make it easier to sell to, to this board of supervisors. That it's not going to be a big additional cost in terms of manpower or other resources. Right. Yeah, there, there are other types of solutions that may not be as beautiful, but there are sustainable, environmentally friendly grasses that don't take much maintenance, right? Buffalo grass, something like that, that you put it in, you can mow it a couple times a year, and that's it. You basically yeah. don't have money yeah. to do it. There's, there's no fertilizing, there's no herbicides, there's none of that stuff right. going on with it. Now, it's not beautiful, right? It, it's just grass. But grasses can be beautiful. Well, you know? I, I love it, but the, the, <laughs> well, not it's, I mean, it's not it's not blue bonnets, right? Right. I, I, what, what, you, what you're talking about in Texas is Lee right. Johnson's blue bonnet project, where right. they put a million miles of blue bonnets in. Right. Right. That was gigantic. I mean, that was a gigantic project, um, and I don't know how sustainable that is. Obviously, the blue bonnets come back every year, but I don't know what else they're doing there. Mm -hmm. But there are environmentally friendly, sustainable grasses mm -hmm. that well, we could put in that maybe they don't have- Wildflowers that are also environmentally sustainable and you mow them once a year. So like like you're saying with the grasses, yeah. I mean, there's, there's not a high maintenance going on there. And so, uh, even in terms of removing the invasives yeah. on that, you can do that. If you do it right, you can get it done in one day and that would be it. Would you- would, would the group agree to um, ask Eric to come up with some ideas because he's already done some of this? Mm -hmm. um, I would I would be happy if you wouldn't mind I, I'd be happy to. writing up a proposal. I can do that. I think that would be an, a beginning. Sure. Doesn't mean we have to do anything yet, but we'll have a proposal. We'll have some ideas for plant material. Maybe even include some steps. You know, maybe you know, five steps or whatever. Yeah. Think now, I don't know about 75 miles worth of. No, no, not, not that. Sorry, sorry. Let's start with this. Yeah, yeah. This is a model. Yeah, exactly. We don't know where this is going to go. Yeah. So we just keep our minds focused on these two strips. Aaron, do you have any idea of the uh, the dimensions of these two strips? No, I don't. Okay, so we're going to have to take a look at and measure them. Probably. I think they're maybe you can't you know, have wider, 10 by 100 or, or so. Yeah. Okay, well, that's pretty substantial. 10 by 100 is pretty substantial. bigger than your map. That's a lot of square footage, yeah. It's not bigger than my map. Okay. It is. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so we have an idea. And that's as far as it's going to go tonight. We'll revisit that. The downside of something like that is there's no downside to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's say, for instance, that we put in wildflowers and they're only halfway successful. That's far better than the alternative that's already happened with the herbicides and the pesticides mm -hmm. and all the rest. Mm -hmm. And if grasses take over. That's a major place over the, yeah. again, that's a win too. Everything is a win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and something that starts taking care of itself instead of us having to treat it exactly. every year. In yeah. fact, yeah. what would be useful is to get some idea of what the actual herbicide and pesticide budget of the account, of the township is. <laughs> and, uh, you yeah. know, if there's a mowing budget as well, too. Oh, yeah, there's quite a bit of manpower. So now we know, that for yes. those, we start to have under, understanding what some of those numbers are, and then we start to say, well, this is the mark we have to hit. You know, can we do that? Can we? Yeah. Have Let's get those numbers together. What's, what's the payback? I mean, that's where you're going with that. There's going to be some initial cost to put it in, but the payback is fast. Okay. Let's let's get rid of any monetary objections by finding out how much money is already being spent. Yeah. So can we get those numbers together? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get we'll get oh, moving okay. on that. And once you have some numbers, you will. And then we'll have ultimately in a year or two, maybe or three, who knows how long this is going to take. Yeah. We'll have a comparison, mm -hmm. and we can say, is this worth it or not? But I have to say, I appreciate the township being willing to experiment well, yeah, from, with an alternative to pesticides. From our perspective, pesticides. if we get to a spot where we don't have to go out there and mow, you know, once a month and treat, you know, mm -hmm. once a month, that frees up a lot more manpower to, to do mm -hmm. actual projects with the guys. <laughs> yeah, it, it plays into similar to what the township is starting to do with naturalizing basins as well. Right. But it's, it's a, the similar incentive. Instead of from the township side, it'll be cheaper for 
from a mowing standpoint. Sure. To let them naturalize. Mm -hmm. it, it is a win. Oh, yes, on many levels. Thank you for taking this on. Um, we're going to move into ongoing. I'm watching the time. I don't want to go past 9 o'clock. That is not going to happen. So let's move on here. But we have a lot going on, as we've acknowledged. Okay. Ongoing business. Educational signage in Township Parks. Uh, we have locations for the two tree signs. We, we had a walk and talk. We agreed on two sites. Then I had a follow-up was Eric and Tanya and me. And then Chris Mason and I had to have a follow-up walk because those two exact sites were in a dip, yeah. in a little flood area. <laughs> and the signs were going to be collecting debris every time it, there was a big rain. We tweaked the sites. Eric and Tanya and I agree that the tweaked it, sites. It, it was me, not Tanya. I'm sorry. And <laughs> I'm, so <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank, Thank you. you. It was Italia and Eric and I. We picked these sites, and um, they're, they're, the tweaking is okay. And I, I think we're, we're going to move one side, one side to the other side of the trail, directly across from where we wanted it. But there's a beautiful grove of beech trees there. The sign will be talking to the beech trees. It's beautiful. The other one we just had to push down the trail a little bit. Uh, still, it's, it's the same site. So without interfering in the sewer line and without being in a flooded area, we now have two perfectly good sites for those tree signs. And I think they're going to be installed fairly soon. Yay. This yeah. is the, the along the Neiman's, Neiman's Trail? And this is on the Neiman Trail. Oh, okay. Yeah. There are also lots of opportunities for other educational signage in Castle Valley, in Bridge Point, and even along the Neiman Trail. So uh, let's not try to do too much right now. But down the road, we have opportunities for more, more signage. Uh, but I'd like to take with that for now, because we have so much going on. And we have a shortage of manpower and women power. OK, is that all right? We don't proceed. OK. Um, handouts, posters for table events. Um, I don't know. I don't know whether that's going anywhere. Well, you know, I, I think I, I think Kara Raymond had proposed this, and mm -hmm. I offered to help with her, and I reached out, and mm -hmm. I haven't seen her now in mm -hmm. a couple of months. So you're, yeah, you're going to be working with her tomorrow night. At, okay, at the, talk about yeah, it. Yeah, talk about that. Okay. That'd be good. Right. See what see what comes up. Um, item C: Master Watershed Steward Project. This is Eric's wife's project. This is Jane Neal's project. It looks now like the first work session for the invasive plants around the basin, across from the native plant garden will be July 21st. Actually, I think Jane is thinking tomorrow. Is she thinking tomorrow now? Yeah. OK. But I, she hasn't been able to get the organized, the master gardener, so it may just be me or me. And, <laughs> me. Yeah, and, uh, Owen, unless and I think she mentioned Owen. Well, there's a concert tomorrow night, right? And and you know, I'll, I'll be there. But um, yeah, so tomorrow I know you, uh, you suggested you want to be a part of that. I would be happy to do so. Yeah, but tomorrow, tomorrow would work for your manning and booth, right? Might be some energetic kids in the concert that want to bring up some plants. <laughs> well, I think Jane's going to be uh, uh, trying to get more master watershed stewards involved. Exactly. And that's going to be really important. Also, Jane is clear that Aaron is her advisor, and she she and you have been communicating. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's she had, so and I'm not quite sure why uh, it didn't get organized for tomorrow night in terms of the master watershed gardener. Do you know what's my initial email to her ended up in the um, junk. Oh. <laughs> okay. So okay. there was a slight delay between her, her seeing my yeah, go ahead. But you know, now if, if, if a group I think shows she saw up it, uh, late last week. Or yeah, because I think yeah. she can't get the list till Friday or something. There's some reason why the master wire. Oh, I, yeah, because yeah. The, the lead person at Penn State Extension in Bucks County is it, is on a, a, a bereavement leave. Oh, right. Yeah, so there's it's, there's okay. a slowdown here a yeah. little bit. That's when, why the yeah, master wire shift will show up probably on the 21st or the 1st. Okay. Yeah, I think so. So it looks like maybe the 21st. If she okay. has a person or two there tomorrow night, Aaron, that's OK, right? Yeah, as long as you guys park in that lot or utilize street parking on that side, you know, that you know, parking lot close to the native plant garden, you're fine. That's the only request from the township. Yeah, and we don't intend to pull anything out 
we're actually probably just going to be kind of cutting things and letting them die in place. That's just my too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there was no issues with either plan for that. Um, the only real concern was, you know, to, to uh, try to alleviate any additional parking, you know, okay. for the concert. And so I think we're going to do that anyways. <laughs> so what's going to happen is that the beautiful trees that have been planted around so I'm sorry, the so basin. For Justin and Casey's benefit, uh, we're, we're talking about the pond, which is, um, how do you describe it? It's, a, it's, it's across the bridge from Kids, Kids Castle. I don't know if you know that pond back there. It's all surrounded by all kinds of invasive weeds. And we've been talking about for years, cleaning up the invasives. And so this is the beginning of that, that project. There are beautiful trees there that have been planted over 20 years of arbor days. And some of them are really healthy, but they, you can hardly see them. So once we start removing these invasive plants. Right, because there's a lot of really good natives. Yeah, there. there are some beautiful trees there. So it's, it's right. going to be much improved. Yeah. OK, good, moving along with that. So I'm sorry. So. So uh, a small group tomorrow, and then the Master Watershed uh, volunteers will come in on 721. Is that right? That's what I think it is. That's yeah. the plan right now, as, okay. I, as I understand right. it, okay. from Jane. I'm actually so going to be going to come in now. Okay. Good. And it's Master Watershed Stewards. Master Watershed Stewards. Yeah, Penn State Extension, Master Watershed Stewards. OK, item D. And this is uh, something I'd like you to speak to, please. Um, we have been talking about for years. Like this is another project <laughs> we've been talking about for years. We would like to improve the Indian Rock site that's next to the band shell in Central Park. There's a, a boulder. Are you familiar with it? Don't be embarrassed if you weren't, because I wasn't. <laughs> no, I wasn't either. I mean, it's not, much, it's not much of a monument. It's not this. much. Yeah. Okay. And it's it's been there, and we'd like to see it have more of a presence. And I'm going to turn this over to Anne. Yeah. And Janine and I have been working on this. We started, I think, about five years ago on this. Bucks Beautiful had approached EAC about doing some improvement and plantings around that rock uh, and making it more visible as far as um, a more attractive, so it would attract visual interest, I guess. The rock itself is about six feet tall. It's about four feet wide, has a plaque on it in, that's has a saying in both uh, the Lenape language and in English, but it's all pretty lost. Um, there's a big U in front of it to try and keep kids from climbing on it. That has not necessarily been successful, but that was the thought. Uh, there were other plantings, I guess, originally, none of them have survived just that you. Um, and unfortunately, that seems to be a place where uh, people walking their dogs, the dogs feel the need to um, mark their territory, I guess is the polite way of putting that, um, on that you. So there, it's, it's not, a, while it's a very visible site, it's not a very attractive site. Um, so we, Janine and I met with Denise Cizak, Bucks, who's Bucks Beautiful, um, Karen Sweeney, our parks director, um, Judy Goldstein, our site director, and Aaron Wurlitzer, who was there representing the township to work together, to, to agree to work together on improving that. And we all agreed that that was a good idea. We all agreed that it was very important for the Lenape people to be well represented in this. It's a monument to them. Um, and I contacted a friend of mine, um, Nancy Stock Allen, who is the wife of Eric Allen, who's the Solbury Township EAC chair. Uh, I went to school with both of them. And Nancy has been working, she is the chair of the Aquatong Spring Park Advisory Council, and she has two Lenape Indians on her council. Um, so I asked if she could help guide us or give us the contact information if she'd be willing to share that. And so Nancy and Janine and I met yesterday at the park to reconnoiter and figure out what might be the best thing to move forward. And, um, Cutting to the chase, basically, we came to the conclusion that we were kind of trying to put lipstick on a pig. The, um, the, the boulder itself is not the problem. It's the site that's the problem. 
So we're going to recommend that we move the boulder to a calmer, more natural site. This would be in uh, with advice from native peoples. Um, but we think that the problem is that that's such an active site where people are running down to go to Kids Castle or moving to go to the amphitheater for um, concerts that they're not really paying any attention whatsoever to the fact that that's a Native American monument. And um, it does not not honor their, the Lenape beliefs that their culture is based on a reverence for nature. It's just sort of stuck there on, in the middle of turf grass with this poor you that gets peed on all the time by dogs. Um, so that's where we got to yesterday. Janine, do you have anything else you wanna add yeah. on? Uh, I, I, I wanted to add that uh, right now there are porta potties right next to it. And it just felt wrong to us. Right. See the porta potties there. I think the intention of that boulder as a remembrance of the Renate people who were here uh, is, is a good intention. What we came to, to see as we studied the rock and we studied the site and we started to think out loud is that, you know, this is a gravestone. It's kind of a tombstone, that rock. It's a commemorative thing. It's about the past. It's about people who have seemingly disappeared. But when we've been researching this situation, we, yesterday it wasn't the first time Anne and I went on a- Oh, no, no, right, uh, yeah. We're reconnoitering, we're researching. We've discovered that the, Lenape, the existing Lenape people themselves are very much alive and very much in, in tune with the environment and would not like to be commemorated with a tombstone, particularly. Instead, something that would draw attention to their, to their culture, to honor their presence as the original people here. So that's why we came to this conclusion. Right. And it's not, um, it's not what, it, it's, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know what to say about this, except, you know what, it's not gonna be that hard to do. It might seem daunting, but with a winch and a truck, you lift up the boulder and you move it. And we go from there. Now we need permissions for that. We need the strategy of how to do that. We need costs on that. And we need actually Lenape advice as to whether this is even something they would want. Yeah. So we're, this is just where we're at. I mean, we're, it's a, it's a process. We're still, we're still talking. We need to, we need to talk to some Lenape people. Right. Yeah, and there's a tribal council that will help guide us. Right. We haven't done that yet. So that's our next step. But we would like to say that, yeah, moving the rock makes more sense than trying to do something at that site. Right, right. So that it, we're just trying to update you guys that this is still, it's still evolving. We're still working on it. It hasn't died yet. We're still there. Um, but we need, we desperately want to make sure that this is not a white people's interpretation of a Lenape experience. That is definitely not what we want to do here. Um, if it does not honor the Lenape, I'd rather do nothing than to do that. Uh, someone that we spoke to actually said the words, this is an example of everything that's wrong. Right. About, Correct. about honoring Lenape people. That's right. It, that that particular rock was used as the example of what not to do. Yes. So th that's not a great. That wasn't great. Perfect. <laughs> well, at least we're contributing. So. I guess. Well, you know. We can do better. Yeah. We I'm, can. We've got nowhere to go but up. So you know. <laughs> Out of curiosity, Anne, did you happen to come across anyone who knows the original story behind? That no, I'm, I'm going to try um, Stephanie for that because I think she's the only one that might have a long enough institutional history to know anything about that. The original um, group was the Native American Association of Bucks County, which no longer exists. Um, I've tried doing research like different ways to see if maybe they evolved to a different name, but apparently they are just 
not uh, in not around. There are other Lenape organizations and, and associations, but they wouldn't necessarily know about this particular uh, rock uh, monument. Um, so um, my, that's my next step is to contact Steph and see if she knows um, a little bit more about the original uh, planting of the rock, so to speak. I think the rock came from Edison Quarry, didn't it? It did, yeah. The guy that owned Edison Quarry, and again, I believe he's no not with us any longer, but at that point, he was very enthusiastic about um, uh, the Lenape culture and wanted to do something about that. This was, you know, at least 20 years ago. And I think, you know, good intentions. I don't, I, I, I'm not trying to uh, denigrate what he did, but it, you know, we're, we're, all things cultural are difficult if you're not part of that culture. You, you need to be tread very carefully to interpret somebody else's culture. And I think he, as a white man, possibly was not as sensitive to that as we might be now. Um, so, um, but I, I at least wanted to find out the background of why the rock's there and, you know, um, if it, if the township feels it has to stay there, that may be a whole nother thing, but maybe we could at least take the plaque off of it um, and move that. Then it's just a big rock. Any further questions or comments? We'll continue our research. Yes, absolutely. It's not over. We're in the middle of this. We're still rolling. That's where we are right now. Thanks, Anne. Sure. Moving along. Item E. Uh, we have a summit that we, we'd like to have on October 20th. Um, we have, uh, Aaron, do we have, did we get approval for the conference room? Yes. Okay, so we do have the big conference room here in this building to use on October 20th. And um, uh, we have collaboration set up with Silvery EAC. Eric Allen is the chair. We've been in touch back and forth, but it's time to make some more specific plans. Uh, we need to update our attendee list. Jim, did you have that? Oh, uh, you know, I, I do have I do have a distribution list. Uh, I can share that easily. Now. It's, it's probably somewhat out of date, but it's you know, it's probably sixty percent. Okay. And, and Kurt and you and Tanya said last month that you guys would work on yeah. the summit. So maybe we could begin by getting that updated attendee list to Kurt and Tanya and me, yeah. and you know whoever else is interested in helping with this summit. I'd be happy to help with that too. Great, thanks, Ann. Let's, sure. let's make sure all, then that's the list to get the attendee list out to. That's a good start. We need to talk, to contact at least two speakers. We, Eric Allen and I have kicked around uh, two names. I think the first one, I think the name is Jay Allen from Raritan Valley Community College. Yeah. Um, he's the person who, who did the drone infrared inventory yep. of the deer in Solbury Township this yep. winter. Uh, he'd be a very and, and I he are you shaking your head? No, it's, it's the times we live in. Oh, the time we live in. What do you mean, Dan? It's setting up drones to track deer. Oh, I know. Not just deer. drone infrared. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Infrared yeah. tracking, yeah. right? Um, but apparently he is, he, uh, he he's a good speaker. Yeah, well, she just ate your arms. <laughs> what was that? Agent Orange. I didn't hear it. Agent Orange, the place, and then chase the zero. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. You find these with that. Anyway, uh, we need to contact him. And Eric also is aware of a group, and I saw an article in the Herald, which some of you may have seen, about a group that since 1992 has been hunting for deer, processing the meat, and distributing it to food pantries. And so what we're looking at is a deer summit, primarily. What to do, what to do. Yeah, what to do. And Jim, your article last year, uh, you know, that was an important start for this, I think. And uh, I only got one call on it. I don't know if anybody else got any calls. But I got one. And it was um, that we shouldn't be touching the deer because they are native and because they're not the problem, development is the problem. You can't argue that development is a problem, but you know, that, yeah, that's a problem. But the deer have become a problem and uh, we need to get some information about insurance, car insurance rates and things like that as well. 
um, to discuss this even further and why the culling of the herds might be a good idea. Now that's my bias, and I'm, I'm admitting it. Yeah. Okay, I get that. But I think that um, Eric Allen is willing to also proceed with this. Do you have his email, Kurt, at all? I don't know that. Eric okay. Allen, I, that's, he's on my list for sure. Okay, okay. because we need to contact him. I'm yeah. in touch with him, but you guys have to, have to be in touch sure. with him as well. Because we need to get these speakers lined up. It's only a couple months yeah, away. This, knowing that we have speakers is important to really solidify. Yeah. The, the date we have a date. We have a place. But we need to get these speakers lined up. Can um, I just? Add, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just wanted to ask. You know, in in former uh, in past summits. I'm sorry. I'm like Daffy today. Anesthesia this morning. That's my excuse. Um, there was a lot of desire for uh, the EACs that gather to also interact uh, and not spend the entire time listening to speakers, although speakers are important. I think that's great. And I understand this is a very focused summit on deer. Will we have, are we going to structure this that there'll also be uh, time for EACs to interact on other topics or not? We have to decide that. Thank okay. You. Yeah. We, need, we need to do that soon. So we need an agenda and a structure. Yeah. In the past, we've had some breakout groups. Um, yeah. I will say this, though. It inevitably ends up being quite rushed at the end because, right, because we're always packing too much, I think. Oh, the last one actually was by Zoom, and it actually, the timing actually worked out very well. But when we're in, in person, people tend to schmooze, and, and, you know, and it always runs longer than you think. So. Um, oh, did we decide if this is going to be Zoom or live? Or hybrid. Or hybrid. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we do have the conference room here. Reserved. Oh, oh yeah, right. Okay. So it can be live and Zoom. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Let's get an agenda and let's get um, a format nailed down before our next meeting. Um, I think that's really critical. And let's get these speakers contacted. So um, somebody Who's else- Who's contacting the speakers? Well, this is what I'm asking. I really need some help with this. We, does, does Eric know those? Uh, yeah, he does. Yeah, Eric Eric would be the one to contact the speakers, I think, but we need to do it like really soon. And so, so um, um, I, I, I can't take this on. I, I just can't do the whole big thing, you know? So if you, Kurt, yeah, can you? Sure. Thanks, okay. Sure. Yeah, um, but I'll, I'll just get the contact from yeah, that would that would be great. Cool. Yeah, that'd be so. And I, of course, I'm always there. You know, I'm always around, and I, and I, I I'm right in there. Now, we need a moderator. Um, you know, I've done that. Jim's done that. We don't have to decide that tonight. That's not necessary. Uh, going through the list, uh, we need to create an invitation. That should happen by September, and uh, we have to assign roles. But the first step, I think, is to get in touch with Eric, get the speakers, and start working on a format. Um, Aaron, could you do an invitation? I can help with that. Yes. There should be something existing, so we don't have to. Right. Andrea had done one, so there's a template somewhere. And I might have something. I don't know. I'll look for that, too. Okay. I'll look for the invitation. And, okay. Okay. So, thank you, Kurt. For, for for taking that on and we'll see where it goes next month but in in the next four weeks right we need to make some progress in between we really do yeah. okay thanks um all right eac table at summer concerts um tanya and i were there for the uh the first one jim you and kara are there tomorrow night right um Yeah. Okay. Jim, were you there already on the 30th? Did I was already... there two weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. So you were already there on the 30th as well. Yeah. With Tanya. Tanya. Yeah. Okay. So we've done the 23rd. We've done the 30th. Tomorrow night is Jim and Kara. And um, I'm there with Tanya on August 11th. Um, somebody suggested that, you know, when the kids interact with that bird collage and we encourage people to try to identify birds. For example, if a five-year-old shows up and we say, you're five years old, can you identify five of these birds? We should give them something if they can. And Heidi has offered to come up with some kind of prize. Any ideas of what the prize might be? 
me just my five year old going to the dentist loves those little prize boxes filled with like the dollar store things. I don't think it has to be that complicated. No, it doesn't have to be. Can we have we used to have packets of seeds? They're still there, but they're so old. Yeah. Yeah. They're not really um, I tell you, when I was there two weeks ago, I mean, it was almost only adults that came by. Um, and they were mostly good birders. They were probably better than me. Oh, cool. They knew much more about than I did. So it, it, and it wasn't a lot of foot traffic, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, um, we don't get that much. Yeah. But, but, you know, I used to have little paper owls. Yeah. You know, I don't know what happened. We had little tea towels and other things. Yeah, yeah we, had, we had some stuff. Yeah. But if, if Connor would like some dollar store something or other, I don't want to buy plastic. That's fair. You know, but but if we can get something that's, you know, environmentally sound. Yeah. I was going to say candy, but also some people have problems with that, so you can. So, <laughs> something bird themed. Yeah, something bird themed. Yeah. Bird I don't know what it is. I, I will be creative about this. We'll say no plastic, no food. How's that? And and no more than what? 25 cents, 50 cents. I mean, it's not a big deal, right? Um, and Heidi's going to donate it. So it's not even an EAC budget. Oh, well, you don't have to worry about money then. You know what I mean? You can just yeah, let her they, get they, they it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, have two, I have two brand new bluebird boxes sitting in my basement that I made a long time ago, and I'm just sitting in my basement collecting dust. So, so that's a little bigger than 25 cents, but. That's not for children either. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? We could use those. Hey, how about at the summit? Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's your prize. Okay. Wouldn't that be nice? Sure. I love I that. That would be good. I mean, it's just an idea. Yeah. Okay. Well, moving along then. If they can get rid of a thousand deer, they get a bluebird box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Sorry. Sorry. Just spitballing. Sorry. It's the anesthesia, right? Uh, it is. Yeah. I'm going to blame it on that for a week. So, yeah. I don't know how many of you have met Lisa Parcell. She's our new township program coordinator. And I just wanted to mention her and say welcome. She's not here, but uh, I did have a chance to meet her when I was at the EAC table at the concert. Um, I would just like to encourage Lisa um, and us to think about children's activities. It's just one of those things that we could, we could even at some point include Lenape crafts or something. You know, I mean, we, we, we can expand into children's activities a little bit more. I'm just going to throw it out there. I think it would be great. Mm -hmm. And we should read Richard Lube's Vitamin M. It is loaded with ideas for outdoor activities for children. And, um, well, and, uh, you know, if we did the story circle, like we talked about with Nancy, uh, that would be the perfect, I mean, that's a perfect tie-in yeah. for the Lenape, uh, you know, a story time and then I mean, I'd love to get a teepee up there. It'd be so cool, but I'm sure we couldn't do it. But we're sort um, of dreaming right now of what could be with the Lenape connection and the environment in our park. So you know, we're dreaming. We're open for ideas. We we'll just keep kicking around. Stuff. Write a grant for it. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. All right. So I have that, a friend with a teepee, but she uses it, so I don't uh, think she's going to donate it. Who knows where this will go? But um, I just wanted to make sure we acknowledge that we have a new program coordinator, first of all, and then encourage children's activities in the Environmental Education Center. Yeah. So, you know, I'm certainly willing to help with that. Okay, pesticide brochure. It is pending township approval, of course. Um, um, but it looks pretty good. Kara Raymond is finishing up polishing the actual brochure, but the images are chosen, the text is chosen, it looks really good. The focus is on children and pets and, and the effect that pesticides have on them. That's the focus of the brochure. Um, and Kara discovered that for $223.12, we can have 500 of them printed, um, but it's pending township approval. Yeah. Aaron, what's the procedure here? Can we vote on allocating that money without township approval? Maybe not. Um, probably putting the cart before the horse, but <laughs> well, you could you could vote. I would be subject to subject to township approval. Yeah, you could do it that way. Um, the amount is wrong. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Because that's with tax, and we are tax exempt. So when we purchase it, it would be with our tax exemption. So your approval for that amount would be too high. 
Um, I don't I don't know what the exact number would come back. Oh, that's I, I reached out to Tanya. I can help set that up for her. Okay, to Kara. Sorry, or, Kara. Sorry. I guess it's Tara, Kara, and and uh, and Heidi. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we should table it. Now. I think it's a little bit squishy. Yeah. As um, an item. Did you guys see the the final version of it? It's not finalized yet. The text I'd like to see it before we vote on that too. Okay, yeah. that's that's fair. That's good. Yeah. Let's hope that it, that we can see something. Yeah, it uh, was pretty. It was. Uh, hopefully, it's toned down quite a bit. It was it a, a little bit terrifying at one point. Yeah. yeah. It's toned down, but we still have to take another look at it. Yeah, I think so. I don't. Let's not do money now. Yeah, premature to talk about money. Okay, got it. Um, next month. So backyard habitat program is also, it's called the bird friendly habitat recognition program. And this is what mid Atlantic Audubon has come up with as a substitute for bird towns, backyard recognition. Program. What's it called now? It's called bird friendly habitat recognition program. Bird town is apparently not a hundred percent yet dead but pretty close to being dead. Um, we'll see where it goes in the next month, but they are, they do want to continue Mid-Atlantic Audubon, which is a reorganized group, wants to continue with this uh, bird-friendly habitat recognition program for people's properties. Um, I, I can see that piggybacking on watershed-friendly properties. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's a lot of signage and a lot of programs um, I don't know where this is going to go. Invasive plant of the month will be Canada thistle. Right. The display case down at the uh, Environmental Education Center has butterfly bush in it right now as the invasive plant of the month. I do try to switch that up once a month. Erin, when you have that printed, when she gets you the graphic, yeah. you know, just let me know. I'll come pick it up and I'll, I'll get down there and change that up. Yeah. Yep. We have, we're starting to get a routine on that. Uh, stop me if there's questions or comments. I've got to check the time. What's the time? Eight, eight, okay, eight, we're doing eight, all right. Eight, we're eight, doing eight, all right. Eight, okay. Um, okay, native plant demonstration garden. A couple things. Yay, I got the, the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society gardening contest application in three days ahead of time before the deadline. That is in, I've been acknowledged, yes. The application is in. I expect that this year we will have a fourth plaque. I'm predicting that on that bird blind we will have another award. I think that the garden has not only expanded but been beautified, and I'm very proud of it. And I think the application turned out pretty well. Thank you, Aaron, for your help on that application. No we ended up with 15 good photographs. Yes. And I think I wrote some pretty good text, if I do say so myself. So let's see what happens. Okay. The garden last month, our work day had 17 volunteers. The crew is great. It's heavy on master gardeners now. People just get to work, they work for two hours. We stop, we socialize, we're back. It's close COVID. It feels great. The garden looks terrific right now. It's loaded with Monarda. Bee balm is blooming like crazy. And uh, please go down and check it out. Um, we are expanding that garden. And it's going to be probably at least a year or two. Chris Mason uh, has has said that this fall and winter, the existing dead and dying ash trees in that area will be taken out. And then we'll see how much sunshine we have. And we can proceed with thinking about a design plan. It may not be anything more than uh, shrubs and trees. But when we do thin out plants in that garden, we're now moving them to the expansion area. So we're not wasting the plant material. Eric, do you have anything else to say about that? Because you've been there. It's looking great. Yeah, it is looking great. It's a nice garden. I thought Nancy, uh, what was her, what? Uh, Stock Allen. Stock yeah. Allen, who was great. with us yesterday. I think uh, she said, it's a charming garden. I thought, yeah. okay, that's yeah. good. I like that kind of response. OK, so moving along, um, ready for 100. We have a meeting coming up September 14th at 9.30. Let's make sure we get that on our calendars. Yeah, that's with the Planning Commission, right? Yeah, that's with the Planning Commission. And, um, you know, we're talking about where we're headed. 
and I'm not the person to speak to that. I do want to add, though, that Kara, and it was Tanya, wasn't it? And Kara, Tanya, and I took a drive around. You weren't on that trip, right? Correct. Yeah, okay, so it, it, look what we did. Kara generated a map of open space, open space and uh, township owned lots. It took two hours for us to drive around just to take a look at them. We, most of the time we got out of the car too and we walked in. We had some beautiful locations. What a, what a pleasure that was. Are you sending out a copy of that map? I have not. I don't know what to do with this yet. Give me a copy. But you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to put that, I'd like to make sure that's also on the agenda. For do we have meeting. an agenda for that meeting? No, it's not written yet. Somebody needs to do that. Okay. And Jim, you're, you guys have been on the ready okay. for one So, so, uh, so the agenda with the Planning Commission, I think, well, is, um, it's the, it's the ordinance, it's the renewable energy ordinance we want to talk about. It's the uh, management of existing open space. Is that right? The stewardship of existing open space. Is that the second issue? Existing township owned. Township owned. Okay. Lots and open space. And, and is it just one hour do we have? Um, I, I think it's an hour. Okay. And okay. Is there anything else to put on the agenda? Uh, let me just see my notes. No, that that that's it. That's that's what I have. And you know what's beautiful is that the township is already naturalizing basins. That's already a commitment, and it's happening. And it's going to be a long slog, you know, to make it beautiful. I'm looking about three a year right now. Say again. It looks like about three a year right now. Three a year right now, and how many are there? I don't know. I don't know either. But there's you know there's some really cool lots sitting around in some developments. You know, and, and we, we could make them watershed friendly properties, we could make them bird friendly properties, you know, we could we could work with them. So that I think should be on the agenda. Okay. Okay. I'll 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 take a first stab at an agenda. It doesn't sound very complicated, but I'll, I'll get something to you shortly and then send it over to them, at least so they know what we're what we want. You know, we have to send it to Stephanie and Aaron and Judy Hendrickson. So uh, uh, even a proposed agenda, I think we should share sure. and see how that how that looks because it's not far from now. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's all I have. Does anybody have more? I have one thing. Uh, so before before we go for late for one hundred, okay, just one from Paul. Yes. Yes. Um, so the the group, the Ready Four Hundred group outside the township. Uh, we're going to do a field trip to West Rock Hill Township. I think it's on August fourth. Is what it looks like. Uh, so I, I don't I don't know if we can invite everybody here, but but we are I'm going to sort of going to go. West Rock Hill Township has now installed a ground based system, and their entire uh, municipal facility now runs on renewable energy, uh, and they're the first one in the state I think to do that. Um, yes. And Jim Miller, who's the supervisor there. Is very proud to show it off and uh, not to show it off but also explain what it cost how it was financed you know um, how quickly the return on investment is what what was involved in planning and, and, and bidding and you know he loves to talk about that stuff so it could very much be a model for something we want to do here um so um what i was going to throw this out is just as, as an idea is i don't know if aaron if you if you would want to go and see that um on the evening of August 4th. I'm, just don't, I'm not going to commit you to that right now, but um, it might be something you'd be interested in seeing. Um, You're going to have a hard time getting township out. That's a concert night. Uh, that's a concert night? Yeah. Oh, what time of day is and this? Oh, but, but what, what about just you? Um, what you, time of day are you talking about? Uh, it's probably, I'm guessing it's going to be 6 in the evening, 7 in the evening. Um, just the thought. I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not trying to put you on the For spot. me, it's not a big issue. Okay. I've already talked to him. I have all his projects. Oh, you do? <laughs> You've talked to Jim already? Oh, yeah. Oh, wonderful. Fantastic. That's great. Okay. How about I have his entire project for that. Oh, that's awesome. That's that's great. great. News. Okay. Is it acceptable? Is it okay if we invited a township supervisor? I don't see why not. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, okay, Dan, I'll, Dan? I'll give you, if you're interested in going to see it, uh, or, you know, check my schedule. But okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna, again, not gonna I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'll, 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 as soon as I know the details, I'll let everybody know. And sure. I do know this is also on Barbara's radar. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. It's 
Now, I'm sure there would be interest from not just me. Okay. Um, about it, so. Okay. They're going to uh, lease to own. Lease to own? Uh huh. So they did, they paid a very small initial upfront cost. It's 82 kilowatt installation. It was 187,000 was total project cost. But I think they only paid uh, roughly about 15,000. It's a 20 year contract. Right, but the payback time I think is is shorter than that, though. Right, the payback time is, if I remember correctly, something like seven years or eight years or something. Yeah, for an overall payback. But the way they structured it, you don't, in order to not have that upfront project cost, that capital cost, there is um, that timeline still applies, you know, for what the solar is doing. But they aren't going to necessarily see that at that time point because the way it's structured. Well, it, it may also be that they use that to pass along some tax benefits to another party to reduce the financial cost. So there are lots of... Lots they of they were creative the way they did it to be able to make that project something that they could accomplish as a smaller right. municipality. Okay, okay, great. Well, I'm, glad, I'm, just, I'm glad you're hooked up with that because uh, I know that they they are way ahead of everybody else on this and whatever we can learn from them. We would require about a 30% larger installation. Right. I also found a, an interesting tidbit uh, just yesterday. The Forest Hills Borough, which is on the other side of the state, it's near Pittsburgh, um, when they replaced their township building, they built a zero net energy gate. And uh, they're very proud of it. And uh, actually, I, I have a write up um, that they put out in one of their you know, township newsletters. Uh, I'll, I'll send that to you, Jim, okay, so you, you can circulate that. Excellent. But um, I thought that was really interesting, at the, you know, pursuant to the uh, discussion that the supervisors had at their, their last meeting that we attended, Jim and I attended, um, and we encouraged a zero net energy building uh, should they choose to build a building. Um, I thought this was interesting. I just, I just literally just happened upon this on a, I was on another Zoom call and somebody mentioned it on the chat. There it is. So I'll, I'll shoot that to you. But it's 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 cool. They, uh, they actually built it a couple years ago. Um, let's make sure we distribute that to the rest of us as well. I think we should see that, especially before the September 14th meeting. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank Great. you, Kurt. Right. Thanks. Okay. And Dan. Yeah. So uh, at the last uh, county commissioners meeting this past Wednesday. They had uh, two discussions, one about their goals for Ready for 100 uh, going forward that Commissioner uh, Harvey is championing. And the one that I was going to talk about tonight is um, they commissioned a study from a group, uh, I believe they're out of Quaker Town, I can't think of the name of them off the top of my head, but they, so they commissioned um, a study to see how the town or the sorry the county could move to uh, a close to 100 percent renewable energy use um, by installing solar panels on property they own so uh, a large part of doyle sound township is county property uh the, the chamois manor complex uh off almost house road the prison uh turk park uh, all three of those are all county property that we lease from them uh, for those parks so they, they did this study. Uh, it was primarily focused on the county buildings in Central Bucks region, uh, in Dolson Borough and Dolson Township. And they, and Mr. Harvey told me they said, like, go big with the initial proposal, like, what's the max we could do kind of thing. So um, it would see about 75% of the county's total energy use come through solar uh, with this. With this total energy big, use, private energy use. What was that? Total energy use. Yeah, total private energy. energy use. No, but only for the only for the county buildings. Okay, that's what for, I'm for, talking yeah, about. For, You're just for, talking about municipal use. Yeah, for, for county use. government. Yes. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, and so how that kind of affects Doylestown Township is a lot of those panels would be installed uh, here in township, um, out by the dog park on top of the prison by the county manor. Uh, a lot of those areas you would see uh, a large concentration of solar panels out there. Uh, so that's that was the presentation that we were thinking about that going forward. Uh, as things stand now, uh, they said it would probably cost the county about 
$200,000 more uh, in electric use um, up front for the cost of the solar panels versus what they're doing now. Uh, they, they have an electricity bid coming up too that might impact how that goes in the future. But, um, and that's not counting any government incentives or anything like that uh, from the state or federal level. So we might see a lot of solar panels arrive in both South Township, right? Well, okay. That, that, I mean, so, that's... Yeah, they're, they're discussing that. Uh, Commissioner Harvey like called me um, before they had their meeting to give me a heads up on it. So it's like, so in case you get a bunch of angry calls about people upset about solar panels being installed by the dog park, here you go. Are we upset? Uh, no, we're not I know this group is not. You know, we're not upset. <laughs> but, You're not the group I'm worried about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what, what we want to just say. I mean, yeah. the dog park is not, it's not going to eliminate the dog park, right? No. Because that would, that, that would upset people. Yeah, this would be like, you know, the areas around the dog park. It's like right. anything that's not uh, built up. And, it, you know, this is the big, bold vision. Yeah. They might scale back depending on costs or what they don't. But you said the $200,000 in increased costs up front, but there's a payback period, right? After well, that, right? At some point it becomes... Yeah, initially, like, the, the yearly costs would be more to the county uh, in electricity. But I would assume as the solar panels get paid off, then they would... And depending on their financing options, right? right? There's all kinds of yeah. ways, as this group knows, that that can be handled as well. Yeah. So, okay. well, good, yeah. That's good news. Yeah, I was excited at first. I'm like, oh, could the township get in on this for our energy use? Yeah. But it sounds like it's all good when you go to the county, which is still, you know, useful. But, but they were originally talking about, well, one of the things they talked about was was a multi-county solar farm. So even much bigger than what you're even talking about mm -hmm. here. So I don't know if that's a separate initiative. Or... Yeah, and that might be, they, when you, uh, to Eric's point about like private use, that might be something elsewhere that they would look into. Yeah. But the goal is, Initial proposals just what can the county do with the land it owns to meet its own uses uh, for energy? It's a start, it's a good mm -hmm. start. Yeah, yeah. Good. They, they got a lot of uh, they got a lot of feedback. They had a commission, they, they had a couple of commissions last year. I was on the IT committee, they had one uh, for an environmental commission. This was one of the recommendations that that group made uh, to the commissioners. So, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for everything you have, you've That's added great. to this. Um, I, mean, I didn't have much to do with the environmental impact. On but, the county, you know, but. We're, 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 we're urging the township and the county mm -hmm. to to move in this direction, right. and it's happening. Right. We started this conversation how many years ago? Right. So, years ago. yeah, this, this is, it's very, it's very promising. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody yeah. else? Last call for yes. other subjects? Yes. Eric, you you indulge me for a minute and 47 seconds. This is Sourman Park. All night, every night, all summer long. There is a huge frog population right there. So for all we have the fence around it and the signs about food green algae, and it looks like a solid, it's not a dead zone at all. There's a healthy ecology going on there. It's pretty well, that's cool. That's good to know. It's, it's a lot louder when you hear it in person. So yeah, that's, you know, I, hear, I hear that from my yard too. I hear the pond across the street is in my backyard. Yeah. I hear that symptom. If you drive up, they all shut up because they, uh, they see your car lights and they all get quiet until they think you've gone away. So they, they, start to up on. they just walk up to them and they eventually start again. The pond near us has that, plus there's some base frog. I don't know. Yeah, that's it. That's in here too. Actually, yeah, they've got a bunch of it. They've got a bunch of it down the third five. Anyways, park is not a dead zone. It's not a dead zone. I love that. I love that. <laughs> How about a, a, a motion to adjourn? I just have a question. I'm, I'm oh, so, of course. I'm oh, so yes. sorry. I don't mean to do that. No, I didn't want to interrupt, but no, I, I, I um, relative to the single use plastic uh, uh, topic, right? I mean, I know what a single use plastic is, right? But is there a official definition of what a single use plastic is, right? Because someone could argue that like Coke bottles are not single use because hey, we use them multiple times, we use them as water bottles, blah, blah, blah. How do you, where is it defined what single use is? I can't answer that. That's a good question. This is a little different all around the world because different places have attacked it differently. But if you think about the general idea that the 
big categories. The plastic bags for the supermarket are a classic single-use plastic. The, the foam containers for takeout food, another huge use of sing, literally single-use plastic. Maybe you reuse it in your household for something. But I was going to say, I want to tell my wife that's single-use. That that single like, from from <laughs> the standpoint of the, the, uh, the trash stream, if you will, that's regarded as single-use plastic. Um, Coke bottles are because the plastic Coke bottles are not refillable. You can't take them back to the factory and say, okay, put some Coke in it again. So literally, it's, it's produced to be used once in commercial use, and then okay. it becomes waste. Um, but in terms of big categories, the, the, the plastic water bottles, the Coke bottles, um, the plastic bags for the supermarket, and the plastic containers for takeout food are the the, the biggest categories. Yeah, I mean, you can use the plastic cover and stuff like that, but that, that's secondary to those those big categories. Okay. And, and to piggyback on that topic, too, that there's two ways to look at it. One is a single use and its bad effects. Um, the real problem is the plastic bags. And the real problem with the plastic bags is they blow away. You know, stuff that ends up in a, in a landfill at the end of the day, it's such a minor part of the problems that we're suffering in the environment. Landfills are just like not even worth hardly discussing as a problem. So anything that like a plastic bottle ends up in your in your garbage bag and ends up in a landfill, big deal. But the plastic bags and the foam and all that stuff that spreads and gets into the streams and gets into the uh, you know gets into the water supply, gets into the trees and gets into the plants is that's bad stuff. So that's why even just having the plastic bag ban is probably it's probably 80% of the problem yeah. right there. Yeah, right. So you're right, they're very plastic bags. Well, and, and plus then with the environmental things, they break down into microplastics, and, and literally, you find them everywhere, including in our food supplies and everything else. So, yeah, but your body. Actually, most of the garbage ends up in the, gar in the regular <laughs> garbage stream and ends up in a landfill, and it's, you know, and it's locked away for the next thousand years. It's the stuff that doesn't, the stuff that people throw out the windows or that blow away because, you know, a plastic bag is easy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from you guys? No. Good. Interesting topics. Great. Okay. There, uh, I think it was one of the, I forgot which city it was. It was New York. But one of these cities instituted a plastic ban and they first they did a survey of the river that ran through the city, how many plastic bags were in that. They just did a volume count. And then they instituted a ban and the next year it was almost zero. Hmm. It was an amazing difference. Where before they had tons of these plastic bags that were getting caught and animals were eating them and they were washing to the sea and all kinds of stuff was going on. That was the main call book that was, that was in their river in terms of physical pollution. Right. The voice of hope tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we're ready for a, a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. And second. Second. Okay, and so all in favor. Yes. Yes. Adjourn. Thank you. Good night. Lots of work to do. Good night. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Hey, I'll take Good care. Night, See you soon. Yep. All right. Was this